Okay guys, so we're just going to do a, a super quick um, little webbing tutorial. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to web a piece of furniture traditionally with hammer and tack uh, and jute webbing. Um, so uh, this little nursing chair we've got here, I've flipped it upside down because we're going to web it from the bottom. That's because we're going to spring it later on. So we're going to web this from the bottom, it's got a two inch rail. We're going to use six inch springs, so that'll give us a four inch protrusion when we actually get round to tying our springs in, we'll have a nice dome, uh, firm seat. Okay, so our first job is to get a measurement of both rails. Okay, so we've got our top rail here, measuring in at 440, so mine's measuring at 440, so I've put a mark there at 220, okay? Nice big thick pencil mark so you can see it, and the same at the back. So mine's measuring in at 250, so I've put a pencil mark at the back there at 125, okay? Then you're going to take your webbing, so it'll come on a roll, like so. And you're going to fold over your first piece, like this, okay? And then the middle of this piece is going to go bang on in line with your pencil mark, okay? So we get it nice and straight in the middle, okay? So we hold it there. Leave yourself five mil from the, the edge of the rail. Don't get too close. And then load up your, um, your upholstery hammer with a tack using the magnetic end, okay? So you can have your tacks out on the desk, pick them up. Um, I'll post a little video for how you can pick up tacks easily off the desk and still have one hand on your uh, on your webbing and, or your fabric or whatever you're using at the time. So I'll upload some of these videos um, over the next couple of weeks just to make things a little bit easier. So yeah, holding it in position, you're just going to put a tack right in the middle and hit it home, okay? So now we've got our webbing nice and straight in the middle of our rail, okay? Our next tack goes right at the end, okay? So we're gonna put it to one side now and leave a gap in the middle. And the next one at the other end, okay? So now we've got three tacks and we've got two spaces in the middle. I'm gonna put one tack in each gap. Okay, so now we've got five tacks across the front. Okay. So that's nice and straight. Okay. We've got our webbing ready at the front there. So now we're going to use our webbing stretcher. Okay, again I'll post where to get these from and more about this in a separate post. Um, we're going to use our webbing stretcher to, to get some tension in this in this web. Okay? So <clears throat> I'm going to try and, so we want to pinch our webbing, okay, so I'm going to try and show you how I'm doing that, okay, so we're pinching our webbing like this, from the top, okay, we're going to go over the front of our webbing stretcher, sorry, I'm just trying to make this as clear as possible, and then where we've pinched and we've got a little loop, okay, we want that webbing and that loop to go through the hole in the webbing stretcher, okay? So it should look like that, okay? So now you've got a loop out of the back of the webbing stretcher. You're going to take this peg, okay, and push the peg through the loop, but leave a little bit of the peg on either side of the loop. And then, this is a little bit fiddly, and then pull it tight so that there's no, no give and that the peg's now being held tight against the back of the webbing stretcher, like so. Just move that string. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, now, depending on where you've 
uh, made you pinch. I've done pretty well there. We want, if you can see, we want this fabric, or sorry, this webbing against our back rail, okay? So when we pull back like this, okay, we're going to get this webbing trapped between our webbing stretcher and the back rail, okay? And then, you might need to fiddle around a little bit. So I've got it there. So you see the tension's actually pulling the chair frame up at the front. Okay? So the remedy for that is we're obviously pulling it a little bit too much. You can just let a little bit of slack out. And I'm getting good tension there now. Hopefully you can see that. So I'm pressing the webbing stretcher down at the back. Okay? Pressing the webbing stretcher down. Making sure it's in the middle. My upholstery hammer loaded with attack. Okay, and I hold the webbing stretcher in the middle. So I've got my left hand holding the webbing stretcher. I'm right handed, so I'm using my right hand to hammer. Okay, and then I put attack right in the middle. Okay, I'm keeping the tension whilst I put the next two tacks in. Alright, so I do exactly the same. One at either end. Okay. Okay, now I can release the tension a little bit. I'm going to take my scissors and just snip off nice and close at the back. Okay, put your webbing stretcher out of the way and your webbing out of the way. We're now going to fold that piece back on itself, and you've still got your two gaps in between. So now you're going to take your upholstery hammer again and you tack and go in between once. Tack. Okay, and you should be able to pull at your webbing, it should play you a little tune, it should be nice and tight. Okay, so we've got our first one in, and now we're going to put one next to it on either side. Okay, guys, so I've put um, another piece of webbing on either side of our first piece that we put in together, nice and tight. Um, I would have liked in an ideal world to have, have got another piece of webbing on either side of this rail, um, but because of that shorter rail at the back, I've only been able to get uh, the three pieces going up, down, or north to south, um, leaving enough gap in between the webbing at the back. Um, I'm gonna try and, uh, and allow for that by doing um, more webbing down the side so I'm going to try um, and get five uh, side to side pieces of webbing in um, so I've, I've just done a little plan for that so and I thought that would be something cool to share um, to see how many pieces of webbing you might get across um, a rail um, so first of all you're going to take uh, you know maybe a couple of meters of, of webbing off the roll just so you've got a bit of excess to work with um, and then I'm going to start by just butting right up to my to my leg here, and then we're just going to plan where we put the webbing. So I hold this with this finger, and then I leave maybe a fingers gap to start with in between, and I just zigzag and just try and leave the space, leave the space, leave the space. So I hope you can see how I'm kind of doing that. So I'm just putting one piece of webbing next to another. Okay. So I can see what I'm what I'm allowing for. Okay, so I can see there that I can get five pieces of webbing across this rail comfortably. All right, I'm going to pull it off uh, the leg a little bit because I won't get a sick thin at this end, and I want to leave a nice even spacing in between. So I'm just going to use my finger as a measurement. Really good tip is to start using your hands as measurements, especially in traditional upholstery. So whether it's a fist or two fingers, your index finger, your thumb. However you want to measure, you want to try and, and keep moving quickly and, and also not have to reach out and grab a tape measure because you might have something under tension, you might be holding your webbing stretch, you might be holding some fabric under tension. So yeah, holding on to that is really important. 
however you can measure and not step away from your, your project is, is, uh, is going to be valuable to you. So I'm just going to um, start on this first piece of side to side webbing. I'm going to try and give you a better look at the uh, webbing stretcher um, to see how I'm pressing down and how much tension I'm getting in that as well. So I, I realised that um, the angle I had before, you, uh, you couldn't really see that. So, the only thing that's different is we're going to weave this webbing now um, under our existing pattern. Okay, so it doesn't matter where you start, whether you go under first or over first, um, it's just going to be our next piece of webbing is going to do the opposite. Okay, so first of all, we're going to, I'm going to start and I'm going to go under this piece, over the next piece, and then under that piece. So I'll just leave that there for a second so you can see. And then it's exactly the same. I want a finger space at the at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna get that one in. I understand you guys can't see that. So now I want to put this under some tension, okay? So again, I want it nice and straight. I want, I'm measuring with my finger away from this leg here on the, on the opposite side of this, okay? And I've got a finger space on the other side as well, okay? So I'm measured there. I want it nice and straight, okay? And again, I'm gonna show you how to use the webbing stretcher again, okay? So we make a pinch. We go through the front of our stretcher, okay, take our peg, go through the loop, pull it tight, okay, so everyone was seeing how I'm trapping that peg in there, okay, and then I take this piece, I'm going to pull it towards the rail, okay, and I put tension in like so, okay, so you should be able to see the tension getting pulled through the webbing as I'm pressing down on that webbing stretcher. Yeah? So again, keep it nice and straight. I want the same gap from leg to webbing on either side. Okay? I'm going to keep that under tension with my left hand. And I'm going to put my first tack in right in the middle. Have another tack. Second tack in, leave space at the end. Third tack in, leave space at that end. And then I can take my webbing stretcher away. Okay. And then just trim that off. Fold that over. And I'm going to go in between. Okay, so now our next piece is going to alternate, alright, so I'm going to go finger space again after this piece of webbing, okay, but now I've started on the first piece going under and then over, so now I'm going to go over, under, over, okay, get that one in. More tacks. So again, I want to make sure I've got an even gap in on either side. So I can use my finger. All right. So I'm not taking my hand away from the piece. I've still got. I'm still pinning this piece of webbing down. Using my finger to measure, and I go right in the middle of the piece of web. Okay, so I've got a nice 
straight webbing pattern starting now. I'm just going to show you once more on the webbing stretcher. Check I've still got that gap at both sides. Okay. Tap. Pull it nice and tight. Hopefully you can see that tension. First one. side okay guys so as you can see I finished off, um, I had a little bit of a change of plan, um, instead of putting a fifth one across the back here I decided to get another north to south in, now I've not been able to get these as tight and as taut as the others just because there's not enough space on that back rail, I've actually put it on the side rail, um, but again that's just going to give me more space, that will become more apparent why that's important. Uh, in the stringing tutorial that I'll post in the next couple of weeks so um, yeah so I decided to put another north to south in instead of one across the back um, so that's given me some a nice base to uh, put our springs onto. Okay guys so that brings us to the end of our first little webbing tutorial I hope you've enjoyed it I hope it encourages some of you to get out there and do some traditional upholstery on any projects you've got lying around your house um, over the next week or so I'll post um, where you can get some of the materials and the tools that I've been using in the videos um, separately. I'll also be posting a variety of different videos, little sewing projects, upholstery projects, uh, craft projects as I said earlier in the video. Um, so hopefully there'll be enough out there for everyone to have a bash no matter what um, sort of experience and skill level. Um, also this is my first video so You'll have to bear with me with regards to camera angles. If there's anything you'd like to see a little bit more of, then please, 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 I'm open to all your suggestions, uh, especially with regards to, to video and video editing. Um, but thanks for watching. Thanks for bearing with me. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate uh, to get in touch. Stay safe, and uh, I'll see you next time, guys. Okay.